Hi, I'm Chris and I make knives. Today's video is all about handles. We're working on the handles for the Fallen Star. This is chapter six. Stay tuned. Today is May the 15th. Blade Show is coming up in June. And I'm trying to get my six Fallen Star finished down to uh, Atlanta for the Blade Show. So I filmed this whole handle making sequence over the course of several days and then went back and tried to edit it all. Um, it's not as smooth as my previous videos. I'm just a little bit short on time trying to consolidate everything, get ready for the show in June. Uh, I hope you understand that and let's get on with it. So all I'm doing here is just drilling some holes. I'm going to attach this titanium to the handle fixture. I'm running out of time. This is May the 9th. Blade Show is coming up in three weeks. Just It's crunch time for me. The second program, the first operation is we're going to spot all the holes and we're working on the inside of the knife. I'm going to complete the inside of the knife entirely uh, before I do anything else. So the machine has just finished drilling 089 thousandths holes. This is my pre-drill size for a 4x40 thread mill. Uh, the next thing is the machine is going to do a tool break to ensure that the holes are drilled uh, to help protect that thread mill. And the next thing is I'm going to chamfer the top of these holes before I thread mill them. So this is a 0625. This is a 1 16th of an inch end mill. And I am now going into the 089 thousandths holes I just drilled and cleaning up the bottom of the hole. I'm going to grab a one, two, three block and a post-it note and I'll explain real quick. So when you drill a hole, there's this tiny little bit of material here um, that the drill bit leaves behind. Usually this is um, 118 degrees is usually what I use. And so what that tiny end mill did is it cleared out. That way you have a square bottom in the bottom of your hole and it removes this V that would have been left behind from your your drill bit and this gives more clearance for the head of my thread mill um, to get deeper into the hole and, and have better threads again we're going to do a quick tool check break uh, on this 16th of an inch end mill helps protect my thread mill they're very expensive I can pay about $70 for one so in case if you're wondering what I use here's the thread mills that I use I get these from scientific cutting tools and uh, I use these for uh, number two screws and also a number four screw. So right now I am thread milling uh, for a number four screw with a 40 threads per inch. Usually I use rigid tapping. Rigid tapping is faster than thread milling. But I like to thread mill in very, very shallow material, very thin material. I think it let, lets me get my threads a little bit deeper and that prevents it from moving out the bottom on a blind hole. Uh, but the rigid tapping is significantly faster. Uh, these will be used to uh, when I turn the titanium over after I've profiled out my parts to attach. This time I'm going to fixture my handle. 4 by 40 screws are going to come up through the bottom and attach the titanium from underneath. But doing it this way will enable the machine to fully contour and sculpt the outside of the knife. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, fixture these down and then profile them out and cut the knife handles free. So the inside of the handles are finished. I'm, I'm now going to put a 10 by 24 screw through the pivot hole and the end of the lock bar slot. And this is just to fixture the part um, before the end mill profiles out the handle free from the sheet. So another thing I want to talk to you guys about is this um, pocket. You can see I've made a pocket and this is for a caged bearing. Previously in another video I had explained how to determine your final blade thickness by talking about putting washers in a knife. Uh, I want to be completely transparent and clear with you guys. In my Fallen Star knife, I use small stainless steel detent balls in a cage, and this is what the blade rides on. And so what I have here is I've made a pocket that the cage bearing will fall down into. And I've made my depth of my pocket so that the ball bearings stand somewhere between 20 and 18 thousandths proud. And then you have to mic this to know how proud the, the bearing stand. And then that determines your final blade thickness. You would just, again, simply take your backspacer or your standoff and then subtract how proud your, your detents are standing and then do your math from there. But to be perfectly clear, 
and my falling star knives, the blades are running on stainless steel cage bearings. So what the machine's doing now, it's, it's uh, machining this notch on one half of the pivot. This prevents the pivot from being able to turn when you open and close the knife repeatedly. Engrave my name, my maker's mark, and the date and the month on the inside of the knife. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting in the serial numbers. This one here is James Bond, it's 007. So what I've done is I've machined the inside of my knife and here's the counter bore pocket I mentioned for the cage bearings and a, the pivot notch. What I'm getting ready to do now is I'm going to uh, lap it quickly on the water stone to make sure that it's flat and then attach it to the um, fixture. This is the handle fixture and then we'll machine the outside of the knife. In order to attach these to the fixture I'm using a number four screw at 40 threads per inch. So we have machined the fallen stars. I'm now going to take these off. So here's my fallen stars and what I'm getting ready to do now is take these off the fixture and throw them in the tumbler and um, tumble them with my blades. Uh, just very simply, I put an earplug through the pivot. Uh, this just makes it easier to find, prevents them from sticking to each other. So, welcome back to the workbench. Um, we're getting ready to do now is I'm going to grind these as a pair. I'm going to mate them up and grind them as a pair. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a there's a shelf <clears throat> on my part down here on the bottom. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove that from the liner. It's a very tiny shelf. Maybe you guys can see it, maybe not. But anyways, we're going to take that out and we're going to use a 2x72 grinder and a small wheel attachment um, to remove that. And once we do this, or made it as a pair, we have to then keep them together through the whole knife making process. You can not swap parts. That goes for the blade too and all the hardware. Um, once we grind these blades to match this lock, that has to stay together. You can no longer swap parts. And so every blade matches the liners and everything has to be assembled together and kept together. All the hardware, everything. Or uh, if you go to swapping parts, it won't work. Things won't fit. Things won't lock. You'll have a bunch of problems. So do yourself a favor. Get a bunch of these trays and uh, or something similar to this and keep all every part of every knife organized and it'll really save you a lot of headache. So that the pieces don't get mixed up, especially if you're making like liner locks. I don't know if you guys can see all this. There's just so much parts to a liner lock, even more so if you're putting on bolsters, you know. You don't want to lose all these parts. Everything's been shortened to a specified length and ground to mate. And the lock, each individual lock is ground to match just that knife. And uh, so use these little plastic trays. It's a good investment. Keep stuff organized. But today we're working on Fallen Stars. I've also come in here and I have um, wrote in with a Sharpie. Use a Sharpie. That's a good idea, good tip. So, welcome to my grinding station. I hope you can see me okay. Uh, I have some pretty powerful lights just like right over top of the grinding station to help me see. It's kind of blinding me a little bit, so I may uh, put on a hat so I can see. <clears throat> so I can see what's going on now. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to profile this part. What I've done is I put in a, a pivot and a stop pin through the lanyard hole in the back. And these are precision reamed holes that holds the two halves of the knife um, together perfectly. So I can profile it and change out this 10 inch wheel to the small attachment wheel and then we're going to get the grinding. 
A few things you should know about grinding titanium is one, it's flammable. Treat the dust off titanium just like um, gunpowder. It's combustible. Be very careful that you don't burn your house down. If you want to wear your PPE, um, it's going to get an eye knocked out, uh, a respirator. So you guys can see what I'm using. I'm using a 3M belt. So the first belts I'm using are 240 grit. These are from 3M. They're ceramic belts, 707E. So what I've done is I've come in with the small wheel and I ground all this um, on the inside on the small wheel attachment. What I'm getting ready to do, uh, do now is switch out to a 10 inch wheel and go ahead and, and do the rest of the profile where you can easily get to all of the knife. I really like this Mumont Metalworks grinder. Uh, it doesn't take long at all to change from platen to wheel to small wheel attachment to slack belt. Actually, the slack belt takes a little bit of time. <laughs> so I got to take off my own, oh, the backing on the platen. After I initially rough this in with the um, 240, I'm going to follow that with a Trizac. Um, these are Trizac belts. Some people call them gator belts. This is the same as a 400 grit. This is a, um, a 45 Trizac belt. grinding day is a long one but uh, what we've done is we have profiled the part <coughs> with 400 grit uh, made it as a pair putting these pens through there that you can no longer be separated and I want to use our sharpie trick <laughs> take a sharpie right in there so that the number matches the engraved side only one side in this knife is engraved we got a thunderstorm coming out here so I'm gonna shut everything down I just finished grinding it's perfect timing so a few words of safety about the uh, grinding titanium. Titanium dust is combustible. You want to definitely keep it off your skin. Don't let a bunch of titanium build up on your skin or it can possibly ignite and burn the hide off of you. Wear a hat so that when you're looking down grinding, um, the, the brim of the hat protects your eyes. Um, of course, you want to wear safety glasses and a respirator. Make sure it's a P100. You don't want to be it, breathe in any kind of particulates. Have a lot of ventilation. I've got a, a lot of ventilation. I'll maybe show my grinding center in a future um, shop tour video, but it's got a big fan underneath the floor. Fan that's pulling it out. Also have this little ventilator in the window. And um, make sure all your duct works metal. Titanium dust combustible. If you use PVC, it'll burn it up. You want to be careful, you know. So be sure to wear your PPE. Take off any kind of jewelry. Don't wear any kind of jewelry watches. Um, strings on hoodies. You want to be real careful on a, on a grinding day. Um, built to make you a shield on the back of your grinder um, to prevent it from throwing schwarf. Grind with a lot of ventilation and uh, watch out for fires. <laughs> yeah. The grindage is done and uh, what we're going to do now is we might move it in some, into some anodization. It's been a long day. We might just pick that up tomorrow. All the grinding on the handles is finished. It was a long day and I'm glad it's over. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to heat treat the blades and then we're also going to grind the lock on the back and I'll show you that in a future video. New videos come out every Wednesday. Please subscribe. 
hit the bell for notifications. My name is Christopher Gillen. Now, thank you very much for sticking in there till the end. You must like this kind of stuff. Be sure to subscribe.